Hello, ghosts and ghouls. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Cryptids. My name is Morticia Evermark, and every week I post a new video bringing you tales of cryptids while I drink coffee because I'm super obsessed with coffee and I'm super obsessed with cryptids. You grab a cup and come on this weird journey with me. If this is your first time watching the show and you're not sure what a cryptid is, I've posted a definition in the description below. Oh God, I love coffee so much. Imagine this, it's a dark night. You're walking alone in a dense forest with nothing but the moonlight to guide you, filtered through the pine trees. It's hard to see as you walk alone in the dark, feeling the sandy ground beneath your feet. Every snap of a twig, every dry rustle is setting your hair on end and your spidey senses are tingling. Is something watching you? Suddenly you hear rustling from up above. You look up because what if it's just a breeze or a bird and your worst fears are confirmed as you see a pair of glowing red eyes staring back down at you. With a blood curdling scream, a gigantic monster with the face of a horse unfurls its large bat-like wings as its forked tail swishes to its side and it launches itself off a branch on hooven feet, reaching its claws out towards you as it descends. Can you outrun this monster in the dark, dense forest? Many have lived to tell their encounters with this monster this cryptid, this demon spawn who defies the laws of nature and everything we understand in this world. I wonder if you would too. Welcome to the Pine Barrens, located in the Pinelands National Reserve, 1.1 million acres of coastal plains in Southern New Jersey. I need more coffee for this. It's a dark, stormy night in 1735, candlelight flickers inside the Leeds home as the thunder rumbles outside. Mother Leeds is in labor. She screams in pain. The storm raging outside is nothing compared to the pain she's experiencing with the birth of this child. This is her 13th child and should not be a difficult labor. Mother Leeds is distraught knowing that another mouth to feed will be difficult on her own as her husband is a useless drunk. With recent rumors of a witch trial in a neighboring town, she's on edge. 13 is the devil's number after all. She thinks her neighbors put a curse on her and maybe they were right to do so for she feels this child is nothing but the devil. She screams, let this child be a devil. The storm continues to wail outside as Mother Leeds' 13th child is finally born. A midwife places her newborn son into her arms and her recent curses and fears are all but forgotten as she gazes down at her newborn baby. Within minutes, this new baby starts to change, mutate, transform before her very eyes. Mother Leeds doesn't have time to react. Her beautiful newborn baby is transforming into a hideous monster, unlike anything the world has ever seen. Her baby is rapidly growing in size and weight, pulling her downward. She pushes back and away as it sprouts horns from its head. Talon-like claws rip through its fingers, leathery, bat-like wings unfurled from its back as hair and feathers sprouted all over its body. Its eyes began glowing a bright red as they grew larger in the monster's snarling and growling face. The spawn of Satan then turned, attacking its own mother, killing her, then to the onlookers, who had witnessed its tempestuous transformation. It flew at them, clawing and biting and tearing at them, voicing unearthly shrieks. It tore the midwives limb from limb, 
maiming some and killing others. The monster then knocked down the door to the next room where its siblings and father were cowering in fear, attacking them all and killing as many as it could. Those who survived to tell the tale watched as it flew up the chimney, destroying it in its descent, leaving a pile of rubble. The creature escaped into the darkness and desolation of the Pine Barrens, where it has lived ever since. To this day, the creature claims the Pine Barrens as its own and terrorizes all who are unfortunate enough to encounter it. Mother Leeds birthed what is now known as the Jersey Devil that dark and stormy night in 1735. If you're thinking this is clearly just a tale, stay with me. For the next five years, the Jersey Devil terrorized the residents of the Pine Barrens. It was not afraid of humans. Oh no, it wanted to be among them. Unearthly wails were often heard emanating from the dark forests and swampy bogs. The people of the Pine Barrens encountered the Jersey Devil constantly, living in fear of what might happen. During the 1700s, with witchcraft being widely accepted and known as the Devil's work, it was believed that the Jersey Devil was the spawn of Satan himself. The residents were so terrified for their lives, they enlisted the help of a bold clergyman. The clergyman exorcised the Jersey Devil through much trial, but left with a warning that his exorcism would only last a hundred years. He warned the generations to come that in 1840, the Jersey Devil would return, and it did return. There were a few encounters during the Jersey Devil's 100-year time out, which were mild in nature, and there were no threats made to the witnesses. But these were not your everyday witnesses, oh no. These were reputable sources for this time. American Naval Officer Commodore Stephen Decatur was spending some time at the Hanover Mill inspecting and overseeing cannonballs that were being made for his ship. This was around 1820. While out in the field testing one of these cannonballs, he saw a flying creature in the distance, too large to be a bird and inhuman in shape. Frightened, he fired a cannonball directly at this creature. The cannonball pierced the creature's wing. Stephen was thinking surely that this creature would fall after taking such a hit and he could go inspect what it had really been. To his shocked surprise, the creature kept flying with this huge hole in its wing from the cannonball. Another encounter during the 100 year timeout of the Jersey Devil that I found really fascinating was by Joseph Bonaparte, the older brother of Napoleon. A little bit of backstory here. So Joseph had been appointed the unpopular King of Spain by his brother. His arrival sparked the beginning of a Spanish revolt against French rule. This was the beginning of the Peninsular War. Unable to defend his country in 1813, he was forced to step down and went into exile in America for safety during uncertain times of war. Of all places for Joseph to end up, he chose New Jersey. New Jersey was located between two great seaports of New York and Philadelphia. From this place, he could obtain the latest news of France and Spain. Joseph ended up purchasing 800 acres in Bordenton, New Jersey. As befitting royalty, even exiled and dethroned royalty, Joseph built himself a beautiful mansion with lovely landscaped grounds and lots of parkland for hunting and exploring. Joseph entertained many of the great men in his day. These people included John Adams, the Marquis of Lafayette, and Daniel Webster. Joseph really knew how to party. 
He had the wildest social life and threw wild parties, like the very best with amazing food and everyone in attendance, hundreds of guests. It's easy to guess that the Americans were super impressed with Joseph. One snowy afternoon, Joseph was hunting alone in the woods on his property when he encountered some strange tracks in the snow. They looked like tracks of a two-footed donkey. Joseph noticed that one was slightly larger than the other. Oddly, the tracks ended abruptly as if the creature had been walking and then flew away. Joseph stood staring at the tracks for a long moment, trying to figure out what they were. At that moment, Joseph heard a strange hissing noise. Turning, Joseph found himself face to face with a large winged creature with the head of a horse and legs like a bird. Astonished and frightened, he stood frozen, staring at the creature, completely forgetting that he was holding a rifle. For a moment, neither of them did anything. They just stood there, staring at each other. Then suddenly, the creature hissed, beat its huge bat-like wings, and flew away. Later that day, Joseph told his friend about what he had encountered. His friend told him that he had had an encounter with the famous Jersey Devil and told him all about the story of Mother Leeds giving birth to the spawn of Satan on that dark stormy night in 1735. Naturally, Joseph was intrigued by this story and obsessed with running into this fabulous monster again. So he kept an eye out for it every time he went hunting on that property until he went back to Spain. Our exiled spawn of Satan was about to make a huge comeback, guys. So get ready, drink some coffee, hold on to your butts. The 100 year exile has ended. The residents of the Pine Barrens were in a panic. They wouldn't go outside after dark. They seemed constantly nervous and uneasy looking over their shoulder. In 1858, W.F. Mayer from New York visited the same Hanover Mill that Stephen Decatur had come across and hit that flying creature. He noticed some unusual behavior in the local residents and commented about it to one of them. One of these residents spoke up saying something about seeing the devil, but was instantly hushed by another resident saying, the devil. 51 superstitious years went by, blaming of crops, death of livestock, bad weather. So many things could be blamed on sightings and superstition of the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil came back in a big way. January of 1909 became a legendary week being named Phenomenal Week, and rightly so. There were over 100 sightings of the Jersey Devil within a one week period. Some of these sightings were by large groups of people, others by residents awoken to strange noises in their home out in the darkness. The Phenomenal Week caused New Jersey to enter a state of emergency precautions. Residents were instructed to stay inside their homes after dark, make sure their pets were safe and locked up. Schools were closed. Workers did not want to go through the woods to get to work, so businesses were shut down. The people were terrified. Newspapers were flying off the shelves with descriptions and encounters and horrifying tales of what people had seen, witnessed, experienced with the Jersey Devil in this week. Mary Sorbinski lived in Camden, New Jersey. During the phenomenal week on Thursday, the 21st of January, she heard a commotion in her backyard around 7 p.m. Knowing she had left her dog outside, she hurried to go to the backyard to see if her dog was okay. What she saw caused her to scream in shock and terror as she saw a creature that had a vice-like grip around her dog. This creature looked everything like the descriptions she had been reading of the Jersey Devil. The horse-like face, the 
big leathery bat-like wings, the hooved feet, the clawed hands. It shrieked at her, frightened for the life of her dog, like any good dog mom would do. She grabbed a broom and started beating the crap out of the Jersey Devil. The monster let go of her dog and unearthed some ungodly loud shrieks and screams. The creature started to fly at Mary, and as she jumped back in surprise and fright, it diverted and flew straight up into the air. Mary carried her poor injured dog back into the house to inspect the damage and discovered that a chunk of skin was missing on her poor baby. Sitting alone, the overwhelming fear and panic started to grip her. She began contacting her neighbors and the police so she wouldn't have to be alone. Within an hour, Mary's house was filled with neighbors and police and other curious looky-loos who wanted to find out what had happened, soothe her nerves, and make her feel safe in her home. But the Jersey Devil wasn't done. From outside, the group could hear a series of loud, ear-splitting screeches. The police ran outside, guns ready to fire, and started shooting into the night sky. They were not successful and didn't hit anything, and eventually came back inside as the creature flew off into the night. The crowd was in an ever-increasing state of growing panic and fear. One mayor of a local town ordered that the creature be shot on sight. I don't think anyone would actually disagree with that order. Groups of well-meaning residents would gather together in search parties and posses to try and track this creature down, but none of them were successful. Dogs wouldn't follow this creature's scent and would come running back, whining with their tails between their legs. At one point, as much as $10,000 was offered as a reward for bringing in the Jersey Devil, dead or alive. Some wanted the body for their own private collections. Others wanted to put it in a zoo of sorts. There was a large fire reported in the Pine Barrens, and in the aftermath of that fire, a charred body was found. The remains were of a strange creature that could not be identified. Not even the Department of Wildlife and Conservation could identify these remains. There was no record of any type of creature matching this on file. Many believed that these remains were of the Jersey Devil and finally felt relief that his reign of terror would be coming to an end. But the Jersey Devil returned. <gasps> the drama. One night, a farmer reported to a sheriff and his deputies that he had heard screeching outside and went outside to find his livestock missing and a bloody gory scene all around. The sheriff and his officers arrived on the scene to hear something out in the night and began chasing it. They chased it all the way to the edge of the woods, but they were too afraid to go in any further after it. And the sheriff called out, if it is true and you are the devil, rattle your chains. The sheriff and his officers swear that they heard a rattling noise. The legend of the Jersey Devil originated over 200 years ago and reported sightings of the Jersey Devil continue to be made to this very day. Skeptics claim that the Jersey Devil is nothing more than a sandhill crane, which was at one point indigenous to New Jersey. Believers would disagree since there have been numerous encounters involving the Jersey Devil where they have killed and maimed and attacked livestock, which is not in the nature of a sandhill crane to do. More recently, in 1993, I guess that isn't really that recently, but it feels like it was pretty recently, which is weird. So I digress. In 1993, John Irwin, a forest ranger of the New Jersey Pine Barrens, was driving to inspect a river that runs through the barrens, when he was forced to stop his car 
because there was a large creature in the road in front of him. John described it as having thick, black, matted fur with horns growing out of its head like a devil. The creature stood over six feet tall. John and the creature stood in silence, locked in a staring contest for several minutes. John said he was afraid to move for fear the creature would attack him. Finally, the creature got bored of the staring contest and ran off into the woods. Many would say that what John encountered must have simply been a black bear, but John is a forest ranger and definitely knows the difference between a black bear and what could maybe possibly potentially be described as an encounter with the Jersey Devil. Locals in the Pine Barrens call it the Leeds Devil. They say it has a horse's head, long legs with hooves, two short front legs with long claws, and large leathery bat wings. No one knows how tall it is. Some think it's over six feet tall, while others think it's only three or four feet tall. Either way, the devil has red glowing eyes and makes loud, ear piercing, screeching noises. Its hideous physique causes terror to all who encounter it. During the day, the creature lives in the swamps of the Pine Barrens. At night, it terrorizes anyone unlucky enough to cross its path. Do you believe the Jersey Devil is real? Let me know below. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Coffee and Cryptids. If you want to hear about more cryptid stories like this, drink coffee with me, you know, whatever, hit like and subscribe below. I post a new video every week. Stay weird, my friends. Okay, bye.